All right, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to panel number 15, How to Win d and uh, Hope y'all are ready for a fantastic time here. Y'all y'all doing well? Sure I am. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, howdy folks. My name's Kelly, I use he and him, and I am very excited to be here today uh, because this is panel 15 of Dork Tales Expo. Uh, that's right, Bongmaster. The gang is back and ready to quack. Mm -hmm. uh, quack. 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 Do we have to win the World Juniors? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's some pressure. Yeah. We're with Emilio Estevez right now. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, folks, uh, that's me. I'm Kelly. This is welcome. Uh, for those of you who've never been to a convention before, anime, role playing, or otherwise, this is what happens when you run 15 panels. We're all a little bit loopy. It's a little bit loop, a little bit loopy, a little bit stoopy. Ah. Okay, so let's go in a big old. You know what? Let's do this serpentine. Uh, so, ooh, how would we do the serpentine? Uh, Traz, introduce yourself. Oh God, me? Hi. Hi, oh. I'm Traz. I use he him pronouns. And uh, I don't know what else you want. I don't know who who are you? What do you do? Who is your daddy? And what does he do? <laughs> Kelly, that's inviting too much trouble for you, I think. Yeah, that's, that's really so. I'm here for I'm here for pain. For some reason, I'm always tossed in games where like you're probably gonna die. I'm like, yes, <laughs> please. <Yeah. laughs> All right, then. Uh, following snake procedure, let's go to Jen. That's snake mm. procedure, really? Yeah, because it always has to connect. It has to keep. It has to be serpentine. Fair. I oh. thought you'd go diagonally, though. So you can't go diagonal if it's a snake. Snake <laughs> can't go diagonal. <laughs> snakes only work at right angles what are you talking about all right so it's it's, it's either way it's flies. jen yeah it's it's jen uh it's me um i use she her pronouns you can find me on dork tales in a bunch of stuff including uh just to play off of what traz was saying including the grief and dying panel that was on friday <laughs> all right that means we have to go up by connection to robin hi i'm robin i use she her or they them pronouns and if you don't recognize me yet you're either new here for the this weekend because i've been in a lot of okay. these panels um what was i going with this i don't know um i do a <laughs> stuff on <laughs> we're, uh, we're not then, high i promise not yet oh, anyway great. oh i got gummy beers <laughs> bouncing here and there and everywhere high adventure that's beyond compare oh my god oh my god <laughs> magic oh. and mystery a part of their history pass over to caitlin it is her time to oh good hi. i'm so glad i can follow that up <laughs> hello everyone <laughs> my name is caitlin i use she her pronouns um i also go by petite medic on all social medias i'm a bit more pe a bit peppier than this morning i'm still feeling pretty ill but we're, we're, oh. we're making it we got some like nice nice tea to burn my mouth with and excellent and yeah yep. pain and i was also in the grief and dying panel and i do actually robin yes in the chat i have the king shirt i just noticed it like I you have the so king much. shirt yeah you, you should probably talk to the king, to the king. you can buy that on t public right now and that's the dumbest shirt around i love oh, yeah. this is oh, my favorite nice. shirt Oh, this is, good. This, this is just the Speedwagon Foundation. Speedwagon! <laughs> Amazing. I'm just and wearing a nice top. Sorry. It's same. Not really branded. <laughs> I. Casual, casual Sunday. Uh... Casual Sunday for me. Oh, the blanket. Oh, hey, Gamer Mom <laughs> Luna. Good. Thanks for the raid, folk. Oh, uh, good to have Welcome you here. We're just chaos. starting a panel. Come and join us. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, and then finally, Quista. Hi, I'm Quista. I... You're really exciting to be here. I'm really Aww. happy to be here. I'm really tired, I... like everybody else. I lost else. my soul. I lost my soul. Oh my God. Oh I was God. I was born I was in India and I never got one. So I didn't lose it. I Ooh. just never had one. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we all, need as much that's time for all this my panel fuckles are. My fuckles yeah. are all of the souls I have stolen. Your your, your fuckles? My fuckles. <laughs> my fuckles. Buck fuckles and oh buckles. My. All right. So hello and everybody. Jen's Welcome. Gone. Jen, 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 are you okay, Jen? 
I'm losing it. It's fine. <laughs> Hello, are you okay? Oh my god. Oh no. Let's play Big Eye dragons. Small Mouth. Are you okay? Are you okay, Jen? Are you doing all right? This, this battle just turns into Big Eye Small Mouth. <laughs> oh god. Are you okay? Do you need help? Surprise! Oh man. Oh, no. Gotcha. Oh, man. I need my inhaler. I, I should have brought my inhaler over. You should have, but you didn't, so now die. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> so, folks, uh, today we are doing. Uh, we are doing uh, How to Win at D&D. And uh, you know what they say? They say D&D is a game that you can't win. It's all about the experience. And I say that's logic for suckers. You can totally win at D&D <laughs> by having Correct. fun. Yep. Yay! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> all right, so today we're going to talk about how to have fun at D&D, how to make the game better for everybody at the table, including the Dungeon Master. Because, hey, folks, if you're sitting around at a table playing with the Dungeon Master, did you know that they are a player at the table, too? And you probably shouldn't be a dick to them? <laughs> <laughs> because what? the whole Wait. no matter what you like the, the whole time right? the, number, <laughs> the number one advice you always see on these type of things is like oh well how to prevent your dm from being a dick to you well maybe you shouldn't be a dick to your dm <laughs> yeah okay just don't go be a dick, dick, there's guys. a lot of power just don't be a dick there's a lot of power what go ahead there's a lot of power tripping dms but there's mm -hmm. also a lot of power gamers that are kind of shitheads so just everybody be nice to one another <laughs> right and what that's not that? just that's not just a general call for niceness, you know? This isn't just like, this isn't like <laughs> us like being whiny millennials wanting everybody to be like nice or anything. I mean, we are whiny millennials, but that's not what we're doing right now, okay? <laughs> what we're doing is saying that like, don't be shitty to people and here's how you can't, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a bunch of things to make your game better. Also, we're very tired, so uh, there will be some profane language because we're very tired. Uh, this is panel 15 for the weekend. You approve so, of our uh, profane language, tip us. Yes, yes, it's true. Uh, by the way, this is also a uh, this is a fundraising stream. So if you would like to help us grow as a channel, top, toss a couple bu bucks down below. You can also join us on patreoncom slash dorktos. We're special behind the scenes, uh, exclusive things, and uh, to help us fund a brand new game. We're at sixty nine patrons right now. We'd love to hit seventy five nice. where we can announce our next project. Ooh, nice. Sorry, when you right? said right, box, I just thought of that. So very good. <laughs> imagine chickens. Nice. Yes. When you said toss a couple bucks, I just imagine just tossing burp, chickens burp, burp. at you. All right, so. <laughs> Toss a buck to your buck buck. Uh, buck all right, buck, so buck, buck, buck. Carol looks like a chicken now in my head. So beautiful. And, and <laughs> all right. <laughs> Just just Henry, <laughs> it's just a chicken <laughs> with a really big. <laughs> and he, right. and he goes. He goes. Buck. Yeah. Mm, oh. Buck. buck. <laughs> Jen's holding it together by willpower alone. Oh, I think so. No, I fully zoned out there for a second. <laughs> oh, ADHD <laughs> dodge. <laughs> yeah, but that was an A, an a dodge HD. Traz, uh, I need Shell to draw that, please. Okay. Oh, my God. Henry Cavill is a chicken. Do it. Uh, okay, so folks, uh, let's 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 jump into this. So, how to win at D and D? Uh, first step: we talked about this over the weekend. Consent. Make sure that everybody's on board with something that's happening in game. That means that you don't go under. You don't go do topics that uh, people. Uh, let's actually take take a step back. Do a session zero. Session zeros are the game before the game. They're where you sit down and you talk about the game. And it goes like this. All right, guys, here's the deal. I want to run a game. Uh, I want to run uh, I want to run a game that is set in kind of like a desert country. Uh, and I want you all to be like uh, escaped slaves that were forced to work for like this this tyrannical king. Hey, Kelly, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm really comfortable playing uh, a, a slave. I mean, you'd be an can... ex-slave true no okay no? i guess i see i guess i see your point um okay did anybody does uh thanks thanks for telling me um does anybody else feel that way or is everybody else down for this mm -hmm. i, I really don't like owners, Sam. Like, previous oh. owners ass i'm good <laughs> Yeah, don't worry. You'll die. Okay, so let, let, the, there will be plenty of time to seek retribution on your oppressors. Does that okay. change the way that you feel about that, Robin? Are you okay with like a little discomfort at the beginning for a big payoff? Yes. Or is the whole thing still make you uncomfortable? No, no, no. I think I think as long as I get like a good payoff, I think that's good. I don't want it maybe to like hone in on the that be the only reason. But yeah, no, I think I think. Okay, so um maybe we can work around that and make it kind of like a backstory thing rather than an active foreground is, maybe, is yeah, that more be, comfortable that, that'd be good i think that'd be great yeah i think i could i think that'd okay be better for and christy me. you don't like sand okay yeah You're... just not a fan don't like to no, be is there this, 
Is this a deal breaker for you? Mm. I guess not. Okay. I don't I don't intend for us to stay there. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. For okay, long? Sure, okay. Yeah. I just really like I've got I've been watching Moon Knight and I really want to steal some stuff from it. Um so in the end you'll all be empowered by the moon god and uh you'll oh it's going to be an all cleric game. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, so you'll all be clerics of different Wait, I hate varieties. Being clerics. I'm so sorry. I can't play a cleric. I just want to say Ah, okay, but I already outlined all this in that email I sent prior. I didn't actually read it. No, I cannot. Are you sure this game's for you? You know what? You know what? You're... This, this happens. This happens. So uh, what you should do is if you have very specific things like, oh, I want to run an all-cleric game, send it out in an email or a Facebook message or a what, Discord message or whatever you're using and say, hey, I want to run an all-cleric game. These are the, like, it's going to be set like here, 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 and here. Um... Don't spring any of these themes on people because um, that might be really bothersome. This conversation would probably go much. Oh, thank you so much, Jen, for donating nine. Oh, you did get us to a round number. I did. It you for just a round sprung nine eleven on us, Jen. You got to warn us help. about that. Oh, no. I need help. Nine one one. She needs help. Yeah, it's nine one one. Yeah, it's nine one one. So. So, um, but like, so here, so here's the deal with that. Um, you got to talk about this stuff with people because I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go like pretty blunt and honest for a second. Okay. Um, this conversation that I just had about running this very specific game with this very specific backstory looks a lot different at this table than it does with a table with more obvious people of color. Okay. Um, or anybody who has a background in that type of oppression, okay? And you got to be careful about that. So be be get buy-in from everybody on the table. And if they're not into it, maybe that's not the group you should run that game with, or maybe that's not the game you should be running, okay? I don't think there's anything wrong with running a game about a rebellion, but um, in, in this case, for example, if people don't want slavery to be an element, then, like, you can... You can slowly work it back to a place where everyone's comfortable. Indentured servitude. Yeah, it's, it's basically slavery with more steps. Cool. What about just oppression from, like, you know, the Pyramid Corporation? Sure. I mean, that's basically wage slavery. You might be getting the same themes out of that, but without actually having it to be overt and potentially bad for somebody who has studied that or is uncomfortable with it. Um, uh, use consent tools. Uh the X card uh, is pretty good for certain things. Um, or just the ability to say fade to black. Have a have a table-wide mandate that anybody can just opt out of a scene or cause it to end um, if they feel like it. That's basically it. Like, And if you think that your game doesn't need this, you know what, maybe it doesn't. But I, I guarantee that you'll be able to do cooler stuff if you use it. That's, that's what I have to say about that. So um, next, let's talk about... Um, uh how do you i would say uh, uh, it's a yeah. good thing how to win a D D. when when your dm is giving an idea and he does them they send out a message over something like discord you know read this the skimming of it and come to the session zero or, or forewarn them and being like hey yo i don't know if i want to play a cleric is that okay is that going to ruin the setting beforehand before you have the session zero you know, just 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 uh, read the stuff your DM sends you. Hopefully, so yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Also, let's let's do some just general game etiquette because it seems a lot of people don't know this. Um, what should you <laughs> what should you say to your DM sometime after game ends? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was for fun. Running. Thank you. You did an what do you awesome say to your, job. So, what do you say to your DM if you didn't have a good time? Thanks, hey, what can we do but to make hey, it can we talk about this thing? Yeah, I like yeah. this thing. This thing maybe could use a bits of work. We can maybe workshop it. Mm -hmm. But this thing's also great. Um, what should you not do? Say so you're, you're at the table, you didn't have a really good time, but everybody else had a good time. What should you not do? Flip Don't go the to your table. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, if you're Walk a DM away. and a player is doing something that annoys you, what should you not do? Kill them. K kill their character. Oh. Well, I mean, not the oh, person, oh, I mean, either, but their character. <laughs> Okay, so, yeah, exactly. So you shouldn't kill a character just out of spite. Um, also, don't don't pick a fight with a player in front of the rest of the players. It's not going to go well for anybody, and it's going to make you look like a dick. Even if you are in the right, 
you are going to look like a much more mature person if you say, oh, let me take a break for a sec. Um, and uh, can we can we talk for a second? I, I, I want to, or can we check in on something? Yeah, I think that also goes double <clears throat> if um, for anyone at the table, if you are dating or married to someone else at the table. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of mm. roles. Do not have a fight with your spouse in game. Yeah. or your partner yeah uh it, it like jen jen you've actually been in a game when i when we were much younger and i had a fight with a with a partner at the table yep and that's just awkward for everybody because you're watching you're looking at mom and dad or mom and mom or dad and dad fight or them and them fight which is you know whatever you're watching a couple fight in front of you and you're stuck there being like it's super awkward don't yeah. do it and don't okay biggest tip don't join in on one side of that fight oh gosh because oh. people do that where it's like mm -hmm. There's very funny. It's happened to me before where like I was probably in the wrong, but it didn't matter because the person was like, yeah, Kelly, you're being a dick. And then my partner at the time went, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't get between two dogs fighting. Don't get between a couple fighting. Because if you if you do that, depending on the couple, you become the point the the, the you become the problem. Yeah. Okay, yeah. just slowly fade away and let them resolve it and tell them that that wasn't cool. Okay, well, in a game. Also, on another kind of similar vein, it, um, if someone uses an X card, don't ask them about it unless they want to bring it up and talk about it. Do not ask and go, hey, why, who did this? Why did you do this? Don't uh, ask so for an explanation. You're walking down a dark corridor. It's so uh, what we're going to use for the X card at this point is just going to be a, ra a hand raise. Uh, X card is usually something that is a little more um, a little more discreet than a hand raise because a hand raise is like acknowledging that you have a problem with it. We, you try to be more subtle so that it doesn't draw attention. Uh, an X card, for those of you who don't know, is a way of opting out of a scene. You say it basically is saying, I don't like this. I'm uncomfortable with this. I'm done. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll use a hand raise for the purpose of this little classroom lesson. You're walking down a dark alleyway. The wind is blowing and the scent of death is carried on the air. In the distance, you hear a pitiful mewling. There we go. Boom. I don't need to ask Krista why the idea of a potentially a cat or an animal in danger or in pain bothers them. I, I don't. It's not my place. But at that point, I should be... Hey, Lantern Noir, thanks for the raid. Um, I should be careful to make sure that I don't step on that. Because Krista, Krista could have just had a pet pass away. Um, or could have had a, a very traumatic experience growing up with cats. Some people really don't like cats. I am hyper allergic to cats. And I if, if like, I'm not traumatized by it. But I don't love cats because of it. If And if you say there's a hurt dog, I'm gonna get upset. I, I'll go John Wick. Suddenly my character concept becomes a ranger with favorite enemy guy that hurt the dog. <laughs> yep, okay? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> don't, care how you, I don't, don't care how evil you are whoever hurt the dog's going to die so um what do you do when a dm or player ignores check-ins entirely um uh well, if a dm does it uh your boots are made for walking uh um, you reach out they do <laughs> yeah you should dm your dm and in your dms with your dm you should say yo uh <laughs> this is a problem and if your DM disregards it, and uh, you you honestly need to look inside yourself and say, is dealing with this crap more important or less impactful than not playing the game? Because everything is a balancing act. The, and the thing is that in any social dynamic, there are going to be things that people do that bug you, okay? Um... Like, people use different turns of phrase. People do different things. People wear different colognes or perfumes or deodorants that will bug you. I'll wear deodorant at the table, by the way. And wash <laughs> your clothes. Okay? Bathe. Like, this is not... Like, at least every other day, if you do physical jobs or go to the gym, every day. That is the rule. You don't have to wash your hair every day. Once a week, minimum. Okay? Uh, unless you're, like, growing dreadlocks out or something. I don't know the rules for that. I think you oil it or something. Anyway. Do what's um, best for your hair. Do what is best for your hygiene in general, okay? Um, yeah, rule number one, Ray G, you got it right. Don't be a dick. Um, but in that case, people are going to do things that bug you. You can't control everything around you. So in cases where it is not an active dickish thing, where like, you know, someone constantly is using like a borderline slur at the table or is, um, you know, putting on an offensive accent or mannerism to betray something. If that bugs you, say something. 
But if it's just that someone says, cool, 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 a lot, <laughs> you might just have to deal with it. Because I guarantee you're probably pissing them off about something. Or maybe they're just too cool for that. But pick your battles, right? Like, I, I, I find that when I am doing these panels... I repeat certain like memes constantly. Like I'm always like, well, the number one thing or what I, you know, I, I, I find myself in these fucking patterns and I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. And I think I'm the first one you that can notices. Only say, you can like, only say yeah. things so many times. Yeah. yeah. And Different and you ways. definitely notice it about yourself first. Oh, <laughs> no, absolutely. The number of times where I've said something and been like, oh, <laughs> Oh, I've said that like six times already. <laughs> so, but what 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 else do you have for that? For for when a DM or a player does it, um, as a, if a player does it as a DM, you've got a little more latitude because you can you're in more control theoretically. We're gonna talk in a second about the false the illusion of control that a dungeon master or mm -hmm. game master has. Yes, um, um, I would also like to say about um, just the general minor like annoyances and stuff. Sometimes those annoyances are actually coming from something else um that isn't what that person is doing so if you can you know uh, look at it and see if oh oh i'm being really annoyed by this because um you know today at work was really hard and i'm just in that headspace acknowledge that and make room for that in yourself absolutely I, I think um, if, if you're at a table that's just like, a you know, you're a bunch of friends that have been playing for years and you're playing a really lighthearted, fun campaign, like, yeah, you know what, maybe you don't need to check in at the end of every game. Um, if you're playing a really heavy World of Darkness game, maybe you do want to check in at the end of every game. So, like, I don't think check-ins are, like, required. Like, if, if your table says, you know what, I don't think we really need it unless something comes up that's all by personal preference and as long as everyone's comfortable with it i think that's fine i've yeah. i've played for eons with zero problems with you know certain tables that never had an issue nobody stepped on any borders we never went too deep with everything everything was pretty light and it was mm. fine be be sure to know that the tools exist basically yes. um it's like honestly Con consent tools and all of that are like having a spare tire in your trunk. It's great when you have it, but like, keep it and forget about it until you need it if you have to. Caitlin, you were going to say something? I was just going to say, if someone's doing something and it's pissing you off, they might not even know what they know that they're doing something that could potentially be annoying. So if you br if you bring up, hey, Caitlin, I hate it when you talk with your hands. And I'm like, oh, okay, I will try to do that less. Sorry, that's hey, I, I hate it when you realize breathe. I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, try, that one also, we're gonna have to like work on a little and, bit. And, and try not to have those not. conversations <laughs> when you're frustrated yeah. because yeah, because oh, it'll come yeah, out yeah. wrong. Yeah. Oh, uh, vibrating your leg at the table is a big one for me. Oh. Tapping your fingers, <laughs> tapping your fingers, um, stacking dice that constantly fall <laughs> is a big one. Stacking dice is okay, but when they tip over in the middle of a scene that's like dramatic, I I, I lose my shit. Yeah. Um, so uh, someone just brought up, like like some people, uh, someone in the chat was saying that they're about 70% deaf, deaf, so they do not, uh, they ask to not have accents used in game or certain accents that may be hard to understand. Um, I, I've worked with that as well. Jen, you have some hearing issues and you wear hearing aids. Yep. Uh, and you've asked me not to use certain, you know, I like to use music in my games, but certain sounds really bother you. They do, yeah. And actually that was something we had to really work with um, to adjust to streaming because um, like I what I used to wear uh, a headset um, because uh, I couldn't wear earbuds because they bother my ears. But the headset, um, there's like the the noise uh, thing. Noise I can't canceling. think. Yes, or something like that. And turning it one way made me want made me actually yeet the headphones across the room because I could not handle how it sounded on my head. Mm -hmm. um, but now I have I have hearing aids. Um, I don't know if you can see, but hearing aids, they're, they're tiny they're cool. and this, which, uh, links as a Bluetooth to the computer. So I can actually You're use You're a cyborg mic. now. That's so I am. cool. Yeah. And yeah, I can use a, an external mic now. So I have, you know, the lovely external mic, if I can bring that up in screen there. Nice. Um, and it's just, it's a lot easier. Um, I got the, the hearing aids paid for partly through a program in our province, but you know, they're expensive, so not everyone can get them. <laughs> but like, yeah, you got to be, you got to be adaptive. Like, for example, um, I, when I'm doing a home game and not on stream, I like to use mood lighting. 
I like to have electric candles for certain scenes, particularly like spooky magic stuff, right? For horror games, I like to have like red light bulbs and stuff. But I also have players like, okay, how many of us are wearing glasses right now? One, two, three, four, five out of six of us are wearing glasses, which means that our eyesight is shit. And, and oh, 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 oh. Oh. oh, Robin, don't do it. Don't leave. And like, oh. <laughs> I'm sure some people here can wear contacts and I can't. Yeah. I there can't we go. There we go. All right. right. So Robin's wearing her fakies. Yes. Um, so, but like, for example, like I do like to do mood lighting. And when I do mood lighting, um, I've had people be like, hey, can we turn this up? I can't see my sheet. Because some people have worse night vision. So just be aware that like your stylistic stuff might not be good. Um and be adaptable it's a game guys have fun with it yeah robin what up and i'll also say um and like again i think one of the things we like to say a lot is like play for your friends hopefully you are and if you're doing something else not but hopefully if you're playing for your friends you can have that level of honesty that i'm hoping your friends will be accommodating for so if you if you ask and say hey i'm 70 percent deaf please don't use these certain accents your friend should you know if you're willing to be open and share that you you know most people i would think especially if they're good friends with you would be like yeah no problem you got it like uh, no no discussion it's like yeah cool sounds great absolutely and ray g is exactly right in the in the chat over there speak up mm. like you even if you're a super introvert you got to be willing to if something really bothers you and it's lessening your enjoyment find a way to talk about it even if it's through text um i find when i really need to say something to someone and i'm worried it's going to go weird type it out send it as a voice memo text can be misread but your voice much less likely to be and you can put inflection. You can even say there, like, hey, I wanted to make sure this came across okay. I really enjoy your games, but I I, I can't stand um, people being treated the way that, like, this certain NPC was tonight. Um, it reminds me of some stuff, like, that, anyway, it just really bugs me. I don't really want to get into why it bugs me. But can we try to avoid situations where people are, like, you know stoned in the street and spat on or something like that or degraded or something like that okay, or can we can we go a little less hard or something like that like stuff like that or i don't like being like left completely alone and um uh picked on i feel like i'm being picked on is an is a big one in dnd i feel like monsters only attack me or i feel like um only only caitlin ever gets the kills or something like that like like it feels like like Caitlyn is the one who always gets the kills, but I looked up the monsters' hit points and I should have been the one to kill them. Mm. This is the kind of stuff you will get as a dungeon master. People will be like, "Well, that's not the way the monster works," and it goes both ways. If you are running like a raw game and you're cheating to give somebody else a kill, um, that is a stylistic thing. Uh, you can do that. Um, I recommend if you do it, do it sparingly and do it only when you have to like someone is having a really rough night and nothing is going right for them me and someone else is getting all of the kills okay maybe maybe be aware you're doing it and don't repeat it too often okay if you're gonna cheat cheat for the betterment of the experience for everyone okay this is my honest truth uh as a streamer you i don't want anybody to be like oh kelly's cheating um because you'll never know if i am or not because if I'm doing it right, it won't look like I am. And, and only the DM should cheat. Players should not cheat. Period. True. <laughs> well, and, and as players, like, I, I think if you're in a position where, like, you know, you're all seeing, like, oh, your friend is rolling for garbage and all this bad stuff. Even if you think, eh, maybe the DM cheated a little so this person could get a win. You know what? support your fellow players successes like you know what even if you're rolling bad be happy that your friends are rolling well and like celebrate their successes uh, as much if not more than your own um because it's just going to make the game so much better when you're all cheering each other on i know that's actually a that's actually a, a thing that i know i need to work on a little bit better for myself personally is that when i have a bad day at work and i accidentally bring it to the table not realizing and then my roles also seem to reflect so i do have a tendency to get in a bad mood and i and it doesn't become like 
super like problematic i don't get angry as my character but i know like my enjoyment goes down and i know i need to work on that as a player and get used like and get sorry i hit my mic there (laughs) um and and start like enjoying my other player successes when i'm not necessarily having the success i need in a day but it is hard but i i know it's an area i need to work on as a player Mm -hmm. i feel that totally when like we were even having this conversation earlier like my life has been insane for and just getting crazier for the last like six months and the last month has really brought everything to a head so i have just been in the dumps for the most part and uh i've been like really aggressive towards people and i've been really like forgetful and dropping the ball on things and it's you know and it then stresses me out because i'm not doing well and i'm being mean to my friends and and things like that but like if you're with a group that cares about you everyone will be very supportive because you know it's like okay you know what we all have our bad times we're all going to help each other through those bad times and you know you'll you'll get there eventually um, another thing that's really important to to look at in these type of games is, and we're going really deep with a lot of this stuff, let's go a little shallower right now. Um, and I've, oh, it fell out of my head during the transition, during the segue. Uh, oh. It was, okay, we were talking about, what? Oh, I just said bring it back. Bring it back. Bah. I'm not helping. <laughs> Use music in games for one. Use music in games is great. Um, okay, here. Fun. Sound effects are great. Use soundboards. We've, we've talked about that before. Here, here's the truth about that. Um, as a dungeon master, use whatever you, or game master in general, do whatever you can to make the game experience better so long as it doesn't make it worse for you. Uh, I like to use lighting, sound effects, music, uh, audio cues, pre-recorded dialogue sometimes. Uh, I like, like, there are games that I've ran where I had them talk to, like, a monstrous creature. So I recorded 15 lines of dialogue that could be interchanged. Caitlin, you remember this. It was the, the Temple of Malafidi. One of the monsters kept going, like, yes. And, like, I had, like, all these sound effects that I did with it and and that. It made some of the answering questions really a little iffy at times because I only had 14 answers. <laughs> I made my own soundboard. But if that's yeah. if that's something you have time and energy to do, freaking do it. If you have time and energy to do minis and models, do it. Sure. If it's a hobby, have fun with it. Um, yeah. I, I was just to add on to that because it kind of links into the hearing thing. Um, like Kelly will use roll 20 to do music. Some days I'm like, great music. Other days I'm like, my hearing can't handle that today. So I just won't use roll 20. Um, and that's fine. And for a DM to be like, you know, allowing for those situations of it's not, you know, you must do these things or else I'm going to be upset. Right. My ambiance. (laughs) You need it too. Don't be precious. (laughs) <laughs> don't be precious. Uh, don't be precious. Um, other things like, but that does cause some problems sometimes. We've had times where players could not access Roll20 uh, mm-hmm. for anything. And then I was like, oh, we are going to be using maps today um, because this is a really complex. Like uh, in Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, I prefer to use Theater of the Mind for the most part because maps are just extra layers for the stream for things to go wrong. Um, and anybody who's ever wondered, why doesn't Dork Tales use more maps? It's because it's extra work. And because it usually ends up with me having to do an extra 20 minutes of editing per episode to make sure that everything transitions and looks good. Um, because something will glitch and then I'll have to edit the footage later. Um, it's just too many too many plates spinning. And it's not um, very podcast friendly. Things like our big games for Rhyme of the Frost Man yeah. and Wild Bill and the Witch like Call the Nether Deep. We're really trying to have those go on our podcast. And I know for one that I have that struggle with listening to um, like podcasts for like a critical role versus an ad pod are my two top pod like dnd podcasts that i like listen to regularly nad pod is built for podcasting so they are very descriptive about their fights they use the other mind critical role, i sometimes have to like pretend what i'm thinking of because they do it for twitch so they use map language and it's like i can't understand no. what is going on right now in the scene so i'm gonna make it up on the fly all uh- right our, our divine patron DM Michael Gray was uh, was a he's a um, he's a blind YouTuber and or at least he's he's legally blind I think uh, but so but he, he's visually impaired and he um, actually told us originally that we were one of the best streams that he'd ever seen uh, pardon me that he'd ever experienced uh, for um, being sorry it's it's, it's baked in yeah. uh, for for describing things rather than just using map language and as soon as we heard that we're like oh crap we didn't even think about people who have visual impairments that might be coming this game we're still um as a stream we're still getting better we're not as good for people with hearing impairment um because i've seen a lot of streams that have auto captioning none of them none of them look good it always makes is hit and miss it's it's hit and miss and it always makes the frames or the overlays or the visuals look bad 
they always they, they kind of clunk in and they destroy the ambiance entirely and i'm trying to find a way to balance this um so jen if you ever find, come across any other stream that does it well because um, i know the, you're the only other stream i know well and it's not even really a stream um because it's mostly actually when they were doing it live they were okay but dimension 20 um hmm. but all of their videos have captioning done by people not auto captioning when they were live it was a little worse but it wasn't terrible um it didn't catch a lot of the stuff though so it was a bit hard but it's hard to fantasy you're using fantasy language yeah yeah dust bedecker um right what was that? That was where the orcs come from. Really? Because you just said <laughs> Dos Badania, comrade, to me. And also well, sometimes think, just common words. I think words. Frogs, yeah. I think, in our Discord was, especially with Rhyme of the Frost Man, would throw up some really funny, like, oh, yeah. photos oh, of the YouTube oh, captions going wrong. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is hilarious. The ca- Yeah, the captioning on YouTube isn't... I mean, it's... You know what? The captioning on YouTube is surprisingly good for what it is. <laughs> yes. For a free captioning thing from a megacorp. Uh, that is actually probably using that to listen to what we're saying and and sell us mm-hmm. and pick ads for our, our videos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, um, it's still doing an okay job, um, which is fine. Um, so it is it is difficult, and I, I've actually had people ask on YouTube like, why don't you guys have better captions? It's like, or why don't you have captions for this video? Sometimes it's because the video didn't process with them, and I can't do anything because I'm not going to type out a four hour long video. I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, doing that would take about 16 hours. It would take about four uh, four minutes per minute of typing to listen, and type, listen, Transcribers are type. expensive. And I don't have to make that kind of money. Yeah. Like, I, like, Dorktales it cannot even support one person full-time at this point, let alone one person who just types. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if you want to help us do that, go to patreon.com slash Dorktales <laughs> and start supporting. But, um, so, yeah, um... What else we got? What what other? So there was something light and fun. Uh, thank your DMs. Um, uh, show up on time. Mm, bring food. Bring food. Thanks. Oh, yeah. fun! What kind of food should you bring? Not Those well. Depends if you're. To. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's great. Actually, that's a fantastic one. Don't be don't be the dick that brings peanut butter yeah. to a place where everybody's got a peanut allergy. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I've, if I've you've been got in games a vegetarian people... or a vegan at your table and you're bringing food for everybody, bring something they can eat. Share with everybody. That's, that's true. Uh, or mix it up. Um, one Okay. For, for gaming? Okay. Here's a suggestion for you. Cook. If you have a day to do this, like if every Saturday night you all get together and it's something like a Saturday, not like a Tuesday or a Wednesday or something where people have been at work all day, everybody brings a thing, turn it into a potluck. Hmm. You know? Or cook together. Back when we were running, uh, we ran Werewolf a while, like a couple years ago off stream. Caitlin, you were in that game, if I'm not mistaken. I think Jen might have been too. But like we we made food before a game. Like I made, uh, oh, it was one that game that was supposed to be set in um, Miami. I made Cuban pork for everybody. Oh, gotcha. Uh, and if you do that, you can actually use cooking to enhance your game. Say we're, we're doing that desert setting. Have hummus. Have couscous. Have uh, like kebabs. Like it's they're honestly pretty cheap mm-hmm. like and the the smells like use some like moroccan spices and things like that to kind of accent the environment and get that smell in the air mm-hmm. um be very careful about using perfumes and incenses as cool as they are to use in a game they'll make the room smell like that for freaking ever also people have <laughs> perfume allergies so be careful mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, be wary of booze some people are fine with you know a couple of beers at the table some people are fine with super intoxicated D not everybody is i mean we have good friends over at weed dnd the, yep. the their cannabis uh ga- playing game that's great that's not for me i don't smoke weed like i i i it's just not for me um and i think it would really mess with my adhd so i don't do it um we used to play beer the dm which uh whoever noticed the dm was out of beer first and ran to the fridge to get the dm a new beer you got a bonus on something <laughs> <laughs> But that nice. was, you know, that was, we all had agreed to that. And, you know, the people got tackled, which was delightful, but um, everybody <laughs> was consenting to that. <laughs> so, and then um, to go to, let's go deep and dark for a sec. Uh, on the on the purpose of drinking, um, there are people that have like trauma. Like, for example, I don't drink alcohol either because I grew up in a household that had a, an abusive alcoholic. My, my father was an abusive alcoholic and, and systematically terrorized me for years. So, 
for a long time, I was very uncomfortable around alcohol. It, ironically, it was through, uh, for one, working as a bartender. Think about that one. Uh, and two, uh, I started getting to that point where I could work as a bartender uh, by serving alcohol to my party during Pathfinder games. Uh, we would go and play a game, uh, particularly uh, it would be, uh, it was in the the um, the horror one uh, for Pathfinder. Uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, the Carrion Crown. And I was like, oh, this has like a real gothic vibe. Well, I'm gonna, I started serving wine. I would find these like cheap German white wines that were very kind of spooky spirity. And I'd pour them. And everybody would be able to get a glass of wine if they wanted it. And it was good. Um, and I used that as a, as a therapy tool because I could control what people were drinking. Yeah. I could cut them off at a moment's notice and say, you're getting a little silly. Come on, let's focus on game. I'm going to put the wine away. And because I had that control suddenly in my life, I, you know, it was nice. It was the more control I took, the more comfortable I was. Now I don't give a crap. I don't drink because it's expensive and because people people have been weird about it. So, you know. I, I prefer, I, I am not against drinking in any real way. I have a little bit of more recent stuff with it, but still, like, it doesn't really bother me. I don't because I prefer the taste of soda. And soda, mm -hmm. you get unlimited refills on most places. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's yep. Yeah, I I have a similar not the same family history, but um, my family on both sides were were uh, filled with alcoholics, so um, I was always a little cautious about it. But I still I still drank in my early twenties and and whatnot, just you know kept it limited. Um, now I just don't because um, extra calories that don't give me any like satisfying fullness like food does. Um, and, and I also like soda better and, um, certain like types of alcohol are just, they're eh. So, eh. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm surrounded by alcohol for my profession, but like I've recently started cutting it less because a, I now live alone and I'm not in a university where there's that, that whole kind of drinking culture. So I kind of got that out of my system being in a university and actually being around alcohol constantly kind of is like, it loses its charm. I'm I'm the kind of person that loves to have like food and wine pairings, but it's like a glass or two with dinner if it's paired well. So I'm all about the flavor and experience versus like let's get drunk, yo. Um, so it's like I'm <laughs> surrounded by alcohol now, but I actually drink a lot less and now and and now when you have a lower tendency, you kind of feel it more. So that's also like cut down on my drinking too yeah. because it's just like. Yeah, I don't want to have a hangover now, and especially since I've gotten out of university, they really are bad now. And I'm like, mm, no, I just don't need that the next day. I don't need to be dead the well, next day. Thanks. You make it part of the experience, right? And that's that's mm. that's what you should do with D and D. Like anything that adds to the experience, keep. You know, um, it just you comes down to the comfort of your table. Yeah, exactly. and that's what you discuss at like a session zero or. Yeah, this is this is absolutely. Um... Well, thank you that we're, we're Dork Dose is focused on game and not getting drunk. If you guys have any questions about um, like what we do as streamers or like the streaming process as well, ask. Um, because let me tell you this, streaming D&D is way different than, than running D&D or any other role-playing game. Yeah. Um, you want to know one of the biggest things that I've realized that I'm, I'm nervous about? Hmm. I realized that I was having a conflict because I'm like, oh, in Call of the Netherdeep, I want to have a couple games coming up where we really dive into some of the character interaction and backstory specifically and just throw the plot out the window for an episode. I'm like, but will people keep watching for that? I think so. I think so too, but I realized that I was worried about that, mm. right? And that's the thing. You have to be careful of what your mind is doing. Yeah. On uh, when you're in a stream, you're like, okay, who am I doing this for? Am I doing it for for myself and for my players, and to make the game more enjoyable and a better story, or am I doing it to get more clicks on YouTube and to get mm -hmm. people constantly coming back and feeding like ad revenue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I don't want that second one. Like I want there them to, I want there... the, I I want them to do that. But... Yeah, I said there's there's a diff different ways to like run a channel and play the D, D for a streaming channel and that is a way to do it and i think a lot of like what we talked about in the previous panel about modules is like i think and because i actually m my only real real experience with D and stuff like that is through this just the streaming and i would actually love to do like a 
if I had time to do like a non-stream game because I think we sometimes for timing I think we don't necessarily get to explore or you know we are worried about timing for episodes and being able to fit things in and sometimes that can you know maybe not go as long or explore necessarily everything out of a, a module is like if you're running it for no audience so i think mm. it's us you know it, it's it's an interesting experience we kind of do like we do the best that we can to get the whole module but we probably don't get everything and that's just the the, the beast mm -hmm. honestly but i i really wish that um here you, you, you guys want to hear a gripe mm. yes <laughs> yes i wish that our homebrew games got the views that our modules do mm. I do too. I actually really, really enjoy the homebrews more than the modules myself. Mm -hmm, Ray, me Raina, too. I, I'm gonna I'm come out here and say this for you, you folks. And Eolus in the chat is one of our patrons. Um, they can back me up right now. Um, Reign of Emerys is better than Rime of the Frostmaiden. Yep. Reign of Emerys is better than uh, better than Call of the Nether Deep at this point, and it. I think it's better than Wild Beyond the Witchlight overall. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say that conclusively. It is a better story than Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Um, and the players are way deeper. Um, now, was was uh, Dirge for Exilar? No, it was rushed. I'm sorry. Skip, skip that one. Watch a couple and assume that like the, the cast all died and we had to stop this the game before the last episode. As I left, <laughs> okay. I left that. I, I left. It wasn't your fault. I left that game and I was really kind of depressed. I was like that after the last session, I'm like, shit this was rushed because and we had to start calling another deep that's another that's a big part yeah. of the streaming is is yeah, like, like you had to start the next game right. because you because have you have to consider what's best for your channel too that and necessary. what's going to be more successful and yeah. yeah wish we got the, the same clicks well, on, on i mean we had groups. three thousand views in one day or 48 hours i think it was 48 hours it was to 3, 48 hours views. i think we reached yeah it was ridiculous, and Dirge of XLR ha doesn't have three thousand views for eight episodes. Oh, and that was what four or five months ago now. Yeah, like yeah, oh, gosh, it, it's one of those it things. Like just being transparent with you, I I I, I like to, to be as transparent as I can with the audience for for most things. So like, that's not to say that like I we call the Nether Deep isn't isn't great. I'd actually really love the game so far, and I think the cast is fantastic, um, and I really like what's coming. Um, but I I wish I could have landed right that that ending a bit better i feel like one more episode would have gotten me there maybe two more episodes but like our normal homebrew stuff like reign of embrys was was freaking great mm -hmm. i loved reign of embrys it was oh, so I good think about i it often <laughs> and, uh, buddy, i miss ivy i miss ivy so much buddy is saying that shards is uh is his favorite um uh and and the the i will say the the thing about shards of nern uh, that is really difficult is that we're on episode 90? 99. Are we I think. Oh, what? Next week is. I think next week's The one that Winter's missing because she has Avril Lavigne tickets is episode 100? <laughs> that bitch. No. Oh, <laughs> Double no. check, but I'm pretty sure oh, the next no. one's 100. Because ah! yeah, next week is, is Vampire, and then after that is Shards 100. I think I remember you saying 99 last week. Charles. 99! <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go give her crap for that. Well, maybe, maybe we can switch alien and and shards yeah, that one. Yeah, next one's a hundred. <laughs> oh. so just quote a whole bunch of Avril Lavigne lyrics. <laughs> Why'd she have to go and make things so complicated? <laughs> <laughs> Neither had to be. She one. was a skater boy. She said, "See you later, boy." <laughs> I'll have to cast someone else in the game. <laughs> oh my god! Can I? Can Look, I just put on like? A yeah, you can be in a crystal. You can be a team link. Winter. You can be. You can, yeah. Be just good. Um. Yeah. Uh. So I really wish the people, more people, watched. Uh, so I was saying about the the shards and urn. It's a hundred episodes in. Um. And. It started off as like an improv plot where it was like, I don't know what's happening. Like every episode, like there will be a situation and at the end, you'll be given two or three options for where to go next. And then I would write that story and then you get two or three options and then I'd write that story. There was not a cohesive narrative. And now uh, there is like a really cohesive narrative that is really kind of tightened up. It's kind of like running through cement as it's drying. Right. It starts off nice and smooth, but after a hundred episodes, you gotta you know um and the start of start the, sh the start of shards is rough what's wrong with that no the start starts great you have the goblin episode that was great 
gotta watch it two times speed. What, Krista? I still don't have time. I <laughs> still don't. that so when I I started listening to podcasts in like. 2018 first yeah. ever and so like every podcast people were re- recommending me had like a year or two or three and i was like huh i can turn the speed up on this interesting and i put it on two three speed and i was like oh i can actually pay attention to this interesting mm-hmm. <laughs> and i, I was to able to actually that. focus yeah mm-hmm. honestly mm. i was able to actually focus on it and actually hear everything that was happening um and when i started hunting for clips for um for things for tiktok i was watching games at two times speed i was like i didn't know i could do this on youtube this is great yeah Yeah. i think i think like i can't watch the beginning of shards um which means i can't watch shards and i'll explain that but um i can't watch the beginning of shards because i can't understand it like i can't hear enough Mm -hmm. because all of the early stuff is is early streaming yeah right? so strangely the first couple episodes have better audio than the ones that followed immediately after i don't get it maybe we were just closer to the mic but yeah or no, it's 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 fuzzy yeah so it's just it's difficult for me so yeah. i can't watch it which means i can't watch the whole thing because i have continuity issues so <laughs> i just i need to yeah i i've tried to make it so that like there's um there's intro videos for each season that kind of summarizes everything and i totally uh, but, appreciate that it does not work for me <laughs> it works it works for some people right yeah. that's the thing um and that's why you can never watch uh, critical role season one because they started like two years in yeah it's right. it bothers me it bothers me so much yeah i cannot do it I, that's i'm like why i don't, I don't know these critical. characters I don't know. Um, why do I why, care about which, you? Which is why Reign of Emery's is great, because you you get them from episode zero to episode twenty six, which was supposed to be episode twenty four, but then a bunch of bad stuff happened. Uh, Fair. So like that was that was great. Um but I really wish that because if I go back and like I'm gonna check right now. How many how many viewers do we have on YouTube for shards versus let's find out. Boop. So looking at our videos right now. Uh, Lasers and Feelings has had 57 views and 123 views per episode. Yes. Call of the Nether Deep episode four was published what two days ago and has almost a thousand views. <laughs> Shards of Nern. Oh, I haven't posted it yet because I I just there was something I had to edit and I forgot about it. I think so. Let's let's go back. Uh, so Shards of Nern, the last epic time it broadcast was a while ago. Damn. Yep. Uh, yeah, we took an extended hiatus because the season was a little rough. Uh, bu- 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 so, Shards of Nern, episode 8, has 50 views, and that was March. Oof. Oof. <laughs> oof. Yep. Oof, right? That's an or, oof right there. Right? So it's it's sad, right? I mean, I think that it's it's great. Um, Secret of Hexeter House had such potential, too. It really kind of flopped. Um. I'm really looking forward to the next homebrews. I've got some really good ideas for them, but I want to, I want to brew them a little more, I think, but yeah, continuity issues. Yeah. Like thankfully I don't think Jen is hamstrung by the continuity issues of a world, just a singular plot, right? Like you don't have to be in every game or see every game. No, no, it's a, it's a singular plot thread. Yeah. So yeah, the fact that it's like that one game, like I just won't watch shards. Um, I don't have a lot of time to watch other things, so I haven't watched anything else. But if I were to watch, say, Rain, that would be fine. Meanwhile, uh, episode one of um, uh, of Dirge has six hundred and fifty views. That's kind of nice. Now I know these are not metrics that you should use to find out how good a game is, but it does it does kind of matter on my end because it's like, oh, like this is my job. Yes. So yeah, you, those those yeah. numbers equal my YouTube payout, which is pretty yeah, small. Yeah, you, you don't want to use those metrics because uh, because World of Darkness games don't measure up on there. <laughs> oh my god! Well, all my patrons are like, well, not all my patrons, but I've got some very vocal patrons who I love, who are like, oh, you should like, you got to run more World of Darkness games. You got to run more World of Darkness games. Okay, let's look at this. Mage the Ascension Breaking Tradition, eight hundred and fifty five views. Episode one, one thousand views. Okay. Episode two, 400 views. Oh, episode three, uh, 299 views. Episode four, 290 views. Or two, oh, we got one more view on episode four than episode three. That's weird. That, that might have been like a repeat that I ran it through or something. And then, two, <laughs> and then 236. <laughs> Meanwhile, like, I, I it just, it's, it, it, view counts really do matter, right? 
Like, what's my lowest viewed video on YouTube? I gotta find this out. So my highest viewed video is Wild Beyond the Witchlight episode one, 27,000 views. 27,600. My lowest viewed video is... Why is... It's saying lasers and feelings, but that has 123 views, which doesn't make any sense. Uh, My lowest viewed video that is online and public is... Are you kidding? Really? That sucks. What is it? Uh, it's one. it's one of my let's plays. <laughs> one of my let one of my let's plays, which I put so much work into those let's plays. Um, one of my let's oh, plays no. of The Last of Us has six views. <laughs> oh, ouch! Oh, okay, everyone, go go to open YouTube. There you go. <laughs> it's go to watch have my it let's plays. <laughs> I, I gotta admit, the Let's Plays that I did on the channel, and I want to do more of them, but like the Let's Plays I did of The Last of Us um, were in the middle of COVID depression. It was mm-hmm. like... Because I... Real quick story. I was working as a professor and a writer for a university, and then my contracts ended, and I'm like, I'll just find some other work. And then we had a... Pan- so but I was like, I'm going to give myself a month off because I've got, I've got EI. I've got unemployment. Right? So like, okay, I'll give myself a month off. And I'll look for jobs, but I won't take anything. I won't apply for anything that isn't right for me. And then a pandemic happened because, uh, of course it did. And right as the pandemic happened, I got hired for a job. I was hired as a historical interpreter. So I was literally going to be a LARPer <laughs> at a historic site where they had, they, I, I had just been measured for my costume to be a lighthouse keeper right before I saw the lighthouse. It would have been great. Um, and like not the actual light I haven't seen that but I'm talking about the movie, uh, the movie. Um, oh. you like my beans right no um, and then like that fell through because it was a parks department thing and all the parks closed uh, so mm-hmm. I was stuck on unemployment with no way to find work because nothing was hiring I was so depressed guys I was so depressed um, I, the reason I gave myself a month off is because I've been working multiple jobs as many as eight at a time for the past decade um, the longest break I'd ever had was two and a half weeks after I finished a job teaching in Japan. Uh, so I thought I'd give myself a little vacation. I didn't realize that it would lead to me becoming a, a full-time streamer, which is weird. <laughs> and now I know I spent so much time on breaks. <laughs> I tried, I tried, but then I got, I got really depressed. So I started doing let's plays to, so that I'd have something I'd had to do every day at noon. Yeah. I'd wake up, I start streaming, but I photoshopped my head on all of these, even the ones where I'm looking away from the camera or Joel's looking away from the camera. That's my head on his body. <laughs> They're so cute. Ah, oh, uh, I really need to cost. Does anyone that. know how much needs to be watched to count as a view on YouTube? Is it a percentage? No, it's usually just like a couple seconds. Mm-hmm. I sometimes will we'll skip through a video yeah. just to let it think i'm watching through it yeah i just usually have it play in the background yeah you know what's really sad um is that like caitlin you're gonna feel this and so is jen i only have 13 views on one of my doki doki literature club playthroughs oh no those playthroughs were freaking so good i was i was so so funny like i i was really (laughs) channeling my markiplier on this (laughs) oh they're so funny they're (laughs) so funny guys you never get appreciated in your time. We got a few questions if we want to talk about I know, those. I know, I know. Sorry, sorry. We got off, we got off topic. Uh, okay, so uh, how much is needed to count it to watch as a view? Thanks. You see, and Frog, you're the only one who watched them. Frogs, I wish that you counted for multiple views. <laughs> uh, uh, Dazed Apricot, uh, how do you feel about players taking the luck feat? Do it. I love it. Everybody, weigh in. Uh, so the, the luck feat, yeah. um, Jan, in case you aren't aware because you're not as much of a D&D player, the luck feat gives you three rolls per, three re-rolls per session. Mm-hmm. That's it. It lets you go lucky re-roll. And it allows you to use it as an uh, incoming attacks as well. Mm-hmm. It costs a feat. I say take it. And I'm kidding. Any, anybody have a problem with lucky? There, there, there's no. a few DMs that I know that won't allow people to take luck. Really? I why yeah i know, like, you, I know. it's like it's not like you can't you have unlimited uses of it exactly. yeah <laughs> then, then like outlaw halflings yeah right like, i was thinking about that yeah. too I, yeah pa- <laughs> pax cow 119 is my favorite person right now <laughs> right <laughs> robin right? and i made I the know. same face when we read that comment yeah what i was know the face? we both went 
<laughs> I I love you, Big Much. Um, I think LA by Night is great. Um, LA by Night is definitely one of the things that kind of spurred me on to go deeper into costuming on the channel mm -hmm. as well, because I was like intense. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you think you Bring know it. how to do this, do you? Bring yeah. it. <laughs> uh, another question. Um, Paradox talks uh, about house rules. As a DM, when you find a spell or mechanics being abused, how do you go about it? Talk to the player. Hmm. Is it making the table less fun? Or is it something that's like... I, I get a little glitchy with some of the archery combos that you can get in 5e. Like the like the like sniper and uh, elven <laughs> accuracy and oh, yeah, yeah. like some of those where it's like because like um, Kat's character can do something like 115 damage in the first round of combat if, if she gets yep. it right. Dread ambusher, right? Right, like some of that's <laughs> really gross. And yep. um, I I say plan plan around it if it's something like that where it is a series of things that the player can fall into that constantly like are are almost like a combat macro plan around it allow them to have it occasionally don't cut them off completely to make them feel like they're wasted but be inventive so if they're like an archer in this case start having rooms and combats that are take place in places where archery is not as useful not all of your combats like you want to make this person feel rad but give them a challenge make them have to do trick shots make them do other stuff like that you know and what about you what do you guys think I think it's interesting because I, I it was funny because I saw a, um on TikTok uh for like there's this this archer um that is showing like oh yeah if you think like some of like the feats like sh she can like bend like make an arrow do a serpentine and hit mm. a target behind it so it's like you know what there are some game breaking stuff but like you know ignoring cover and stuff for like it's all based in reality yeah it's like it's cool like i mean yeah so it can be game break but like you also have fighters like distro when she crit on something at the beginning doing reckless like i could probably do like 60 damage with one hit too is this like and that was more often common than just the first round because if you just crit every round or something if you have really lucky dice you could but yeah no it's i think it's just a a talk so yeah um i want to interject real quick as we're doing this to answer a question from dragon lord davy uh should my dwarven barbarian kill the black baby dragon that we found since the world of the campaign humanoid races have been driven underground by dragons that rule the service so i have to either tame the dragon or kill the thing in one hit your name is dragon lord davy <laughs> become Damn its it. lord become its lord come on Davis. man <laughs> the dragon um it depends if you want to pet a pet uh if you are ever torn between doing the thing that makes the the story better or makes the story end, um, you you know my answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like raise the dragon, even if it has doesn't have teeth. Um, did we want to talk? Have we gone through? The I think so. Questions? The only other one was, uh, can you run a demon game? Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. sure, maybe Blended. someday. Uh, which which type of demon? Um, the, the other rule that I throw at my players though, for, for game breaking stuff, and you, you've all heard me to do this, um, is, um, if someone finds a rule or an exploit or a spell that does something that is unfun, um, for, I don't really like, uh, the Pathfinder version of, uh, Black Tentacles as a spell. Um, I find that it's, it's really mechanically useful but very boring and grinds combat to a halt um so i've asked players to not take that in pathfinder i'm like i really don't like it it's not fun for the table um and i'm willing to make a discussion but uh in those cases i also say uh you can use i can use anything you can use and when a player comes up with something or a lot of times players will ask to break the rules in a certain way or bend the rules according to certain interpretations. And a lot of times they'll do it because of that's the way science works. Magic's not science, first of all. Stop it. Mm -hmm. uh, and secondly, okay, sure, if you have a magic power that can transmute all of the air in the room into chlorine gas, which will instantly kill everybody inside of it. <laughs> okay, you want to play these games, do you? Yeah. <laughs> sure. But you better carry a rebreather on you for the rest of your life because every enemy might have access to that. Sure. 
And that, that that's a slightly dickish thing to do, but a lot of players who use those type of tactics will immediately get what you mean when you say, okay, then I can do it too. Because yeah. they'll go, oh, I didn't oh, agree to that. Wow. Yeah. This is a me thing, not a, yeah. not a, not a, and that becomes like a communal thing at the table. Like everybody, like I, I don't punk characters um, unless they try to punk m- kind of me, actually. Yeah. Like, um, don't, don't treat the game like it's less than it is. And I won't treat your character like it's less. Right? Do we want to segue that into the, you want to talk about the power dynamic or the interpreted power dynamic that c and has. has. Mm. You said but DMs have invis- have not actual power. You can't run a... Okay. Um, before anybody kind of jumps in and says, well, what about ga- like GM-less games or choose your own adventures and stuff like that? Um, a GM can't... A dungeon master, game master can't run a game without players. So, you know, aside from those very specific things... Um, you can't run without players. Um, so you got to be nice to them. That doesn't mean you have to let them win, but it does mean that you have to provide something in your seat that is that keeps them in their seats. Um, well, it comes back to you're all telling a story together. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You're all you're not to be against each fun. other. <laughs> Collaborative. <laughs> your players have as much power as you do. In fact, in many ways, they have more because they can get up and walk away um, and go find another game. But it might be harder to fill that slot. That's that's, that's basically it. Like um, Players also will do whatever they want. You're outnumbered. (laughs) <laughs> you're outnumbered dm <laughs> and uh you have to you have to fight against a um kind of an ethos of of role-playing games that states that dungeon masters and game masters are antagonistic figures there is this this culture that we have built up inside the tabletop mm-hmm. role-playing game world since the beginning that says that my job as a dungeon master is to kill you and hurt you and make you uh not have fun and to ruin your good time tpk the ultimate win for the dungeon master right I hate TPKs. TPK, <laughs> TPKs, unless I'm running a one shot, one shot oh, TPKs yeah, are amazing. Oh, they're they're fun. great. They're so fun. Oh, those oh, are yeah. great. <laughs> they're so good. But like a TPK, I will never do a TPK on a stream if it's a long running game. There will always be a way out of it. It will either be you're captured or you escape and wake up in a swamp or you are killed. But guess what? Now it's an undead game. The story <laughs> does not stop with a TPK. That happened in Terran's game. Like, literally, their entire eight-person party was wiped out, and so the party continued in hell. Oh, my God. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I kind of, like, with the no-prep game last night, I kind of wish that somebody had, had died so that... I was waiting <laughs> for the meme could be like, didn't happen. Is that? <laughs> oh, God, yes. So, yeah. So, TPQ... Yeah, exactly. Thank you so mm. much, Skagwater RPG. You are absolutely correct. TPKs don't kill the cast. They kill the game. All right? Mm. They kill any momentum you have. Okay? And yes, Stormshanks, the, the party continues elsewhere as TPK. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, I, love, now, I love Stormshanks. Don't, don't give awesome. me, like, I think, I think okay. sitting down at a table with the express purpose of, okay, without the dm just being a complete power hungry insane person let's sit down and have an all-out battle and try to beat each other i think that can be very very fun but i think that's what you have to sit down to oh for sure yeah i think talk about it my my favorite thing that we've done recently that actually involved a lot of death because there's very there's not as much death on dork tales games simply because art's expensive (laughs) <laughs> uh, and in long running games, I like to try to find a way to salvage players uh, and characters and things like that, because otherwise it's hundreds of dollars to get good art. Mm-hmm. Like episode five of of Rain, when Ivy oh. died because you rolled a nat one on her second uh. death, death save and killed her. And it was like one of those moments where I was singing in my head. I was like, oh my god, I have to get a new character art done. I have to get a new cosplay. Like, oh my god, my character's dead. It's only episode five. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, exactly. And and I've had people complain. Someone complained after the opening episode of um, the Victorian era mage game that we run. Because it uses a framing device where the descendant of one of the characters, who knows which one, uh, has some journals from their great-grandmother. 
and is has brought them to a curiosity shop to get them like authenticated and it talks about like oh these are the adventures blah 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 and that's the framing narrative for the story to to pull us back from the modern day into the victorian era through an unreliable narrator okay and i had people complain uh just one or two on youtube that said oh well that ruins all the tension because it means that we know they're all going to survive i'm like if death is the, the the worst thing that happens to your cast they're getting off easy there are way worse things than death way also, worse so everyone dies <laughs> yeah right like at some point so i mean in theory you you hope yeah. <laughs> Vormos. Ugh. Maybe that monk? maybe that journal ends on a cliffhanger because the person died. Who knows? Yeah. Right? This is true. Yeah. Exactly, right? And um it's 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 rough. Um and I agree that like you should have players escape and you should go and have fun. Uh you are very much in love with the art. Yeah. Uh Hayliz. Uh somebody shout out Hayliz. Uh, Hayliz is a phenomenal artist, a good friend. She's uh played on a couple of our games. We've also used an artist known as Kiyoshiki. Uh, and another artist known as Eve. Uh, Eve doesn't have any social media presence that we can promote, uh, but yeah. Kiyoshiki, I believe we do. They are... Um... I don't know why we don't have a command for her. We yeah, we don't have a that. command for Kiyoshiki. Kiyoshiki's mm-hmm. great. Uh, mm-hmm. A Portuguese artist, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, her... she's, just, she's, she's just awesome. Uh, we have a new artist that we're working with for some, for some new mage art, actually, um, that does a real kind of like pixely or not pixel but like kind of like um cell shaded style mm. looks really cool Neat. um but we just put the art request in last night so it's so good um yeah Hayla's uh Hayla's <laughs> is a fantastic artist a really fun person yes yes, yes. Aurora <laughs> Hayla's we say um and I really suggest that everybody go if you can afford Hayla's <laughs> commission her mm-hmm. she does amazing work um she mostly focuses on women uh, or, or at least femme presenting. Um, she, she's definitely like trying to branch out more into guys, but her real strength, she makes pretty girls. Yeah. Like, so if you have a pretty girl character and you want a lot of detail, holy crap. Yeah. If you want like, something you can blow up into a poster. Mm-hmm. Like Christine it. has like her, her dwarf, like has, has like her digitally printed on a metal sheet in the next room. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's super high. It's, it's she is expensive. <laughs> But yeah, she's worth it. Absolutely. And that is the thing. Like, if you want to buy someone a present, Hey Liz's art is the quality of, like, um, we have some friends over at Norse Foundry, uh, and they have these, like, gemstone dice where it's, like, oh, it's actual tiger's oh eye you're gosh, rolling. Yes. The, the, hey Liz's art is on that level where, like, this is a present you're getting somebody or yourself. This is not a casual purchase. Thank you, Sandra um, Majid. Thank you. What, what happened? What I look? Oh, thank they, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sandra Majid. Um, so that is, that is something that is like, it is, she's amazing. Um, so we had another question in the chat. Um, what is it? Read it out to me. Uh, how do you choose which games you are going to run? Is it your own inspiration, your players or your viewers? Uh, what uh, you mentioned the view account helps guide some decisions. What else goes into those decisions? Okay. Um, do we want to speak? Do we want to show behind the curtain? Uh, I mean, I, I think it, I think it, we've kind of been talking about it of like why we mm-hmm. pick certain modules and why we run certain games. So, um, Rhyme of the Frostmaiden was a really big hit for us and people really like watching us run modules. So whenever a new module from D&D comes out, we're going to run it, period. Um, if it is an anthology module, it will depend on the anthology module because <laughs> Candlekeep was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, having to find a new cast all the time, replace characters. Mm-hmm. So those are going to be iffy. Um, but uh, Call of the Nether Deep came out and I was like, I'm going to run this. Crap. Uh, I've got three months to get this ready. Yep. Uh, <laughs> uh, Spelljammer is coming out. Uh, and Spelljammer is coming out on August 16th. We were going to start running uh, Descent into Avernus. But then Spelljammer was announced as a 12 episode thing. And I'm like, I kind of would rather run Spelljammer than, than Avernus. And a lot of uh, our part... Avernus players really wanted to play Spelljammer. Yeah, a lot of the Avernus <laughs> players are just jumping ship, literally. Yeah. On Spelljammer. <laughs> literally. So, um, like, and, and it looks oh, no. like it's, it'd be more fun. Um, so there's that. And it comes down to, like, Avernus is kind of like, I've heard a lot of complaints about it. Um, like just as a module, like I've heard that there are parts of it that aren't that good. Uh, I'm a little worried about doing that on stream. Um, I also worried, like, I don't want to invest 
I don't know, what what is that, like probably 30 episodes, uh, 120 hours of stream time of my life on top of another 100 hours of reading and prep. I don't want to, I don't want to give up, uh, how many hours are in a week? 40 hour work week. Uh, I don't want to give up six weeks of work to running a module that no one's going to want, no one's going to watch. I might not enjoy um, so I want it to be something that's good and fun for everybody and that is going to be good for the, the sake of the channel. That said, I treat running games on this channel in twofold. Uh, what I'm about to say, I'm going to be honest with you, does not mean I don't love running modules and running D&D games, okay? I really enjoy running Call of the Nether Deep, Witchlight, Rhyme. I love running those things. I love what we can do with them and I love the response we get. It's a huge high. I also treat a lot of these things like uh, like Leonardo DiCaprio and other actors treat movies where I do the studio movie and then I do the art house movie. Yes. And I try to trick people to watching the other one where I'm like, oh, if you like this, maybe you should consider like Mage. Yeah. We, <laughs> we produce Nickelback so all of the small, really good indie rock bands can be produced as well. Have you considered like, Mage? Have like Theory of a Dead Man? <laughs> You, yeah, well, right. Good? The, I, the theory, actually, you know what? In concert, actually, they're actually pretty solid. Like, yeah, I, you Especially know what? I'm a huge to three days fan. Grace. I don't care. So, yeah. yeah. So, Remember three days um, grace, Kelly. <laughs> it's just really true. Like um, the theory of a nickel greed. Theory opened with them. Theory of a nickel greed was better. <laughs> yeah, it's the the lead singer. I think was very. It was like 2006, uh, so you know. <laughs> yeah. So what if you could see? Uh, oh, thank you. We're at 3,400 followers. Thank you so much, Dragon Ooh, Lord Baby. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's, that. that is one part of it, is that we look at that and we're like, okay, is this going to be good for the sake of the channel? Because this is, this is something that, like, this is my full-time job. So, like, it is a, it is a business, sort of. It's, it's kind of weird to say that. Like, it's, it's, oh, thank you so much. Thanks, Fresco. Um, oh, thank you. You're awesome. Oh, thank you. Um, but oh. it is, like, it's it's so weird to consider it a business. It's 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 like an art project. Like I don't know. We're we're doing content creation, so we have to like make money. Um, but we also yeah, you know, it's it's that weird balance, right? So um, does that um, uh, let's see. You mentioned viewer count guides. I mean, what else goes into decisions? Uh, I Patreon okay. is going to start playing a much bigger role because Patreon is consistent income, and yep. it's uh, I. Yeah, Patreon really funds everything. Uh, Twitch is really nice. Twitch, Twitch, Twitch money is good, but um, so much of it g doesn't go to us. Like it's a fifty-fifty split for every dollar you spend on Twitch. Yeah. Um, for not not tips. Tips, I think I I think it's like a four percent commission. So I get it's like for every five bucks I lose like twenty cents or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, like not bad. so. Um, but there are games like like this. Like uh, if I wanted to run, this is Fall of the Camarilla. It is a Vampire the Requiem game set in ancient Rome. Um, yeah. I can't run this on the stream. Um, I could run it for Patreon and I could run it uh, and put it as a mature thing on YouTube. Uh, but this is ancient Rome. It's got tons of nudity. It's got sexual content. Uh, it has. Um, it is set in an era where. Um, Age of Majority doesn't exist if you wanted to run it authentically according to history. Um, so any to, like you'd have to be really careful with a lot of the content that's in this book. Not to say that there's any pederasty inside of here. Is that even a word that you can use? It isn't like studies, but like yeah. um, so you have to be really careful about what you run because the last thing I want to do, like I was petrified running Victorian Era Mage because I was like, I have to be a misogynist, like a really bad one constantly. And that's going to be me online being a misogynist forever Sorry, where I someone can't believe you're a misogynist <laughs> <laughs> right but someone take... said during the stream well but people can take me out yeah, of context and they can nice. clip that bit where i say well, women <laughs> women <laughs> you know what the difference between women and garden slugs are mm -hmm. i've seen a garden slug climb up from the mud no oh. Oh. Right, oh. right. Something I could say something like that in character as some posh prick, and someone I'm could clip that. that and ruin <laughs> and ruin my. You want to clip that? Clip it right now. See, <laughs> Kelly's political career ruined. Okay, oh. you've been canceled. It'll be that. It'll be that clone high episode where they edit him together, edit Abe together, oh, saying yeah. he eats babies. I eat babies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, it's really true. So, I mean, that does make a difference. Um, D and D games. Uh, I. I am supposed to be limited with how many games per week are on Dork Tales. Like, it's supposed to be three and a half. Uh, it is four or five at this point, which is a lot. I need at least two nights off a week. And ideally, I would run every other day, which would give me a day to prep. Um, having uh, Netherdeep and uh, Witchlight back to back sometimes is a bit oof uh, for <laughs> prep. Because it means that I can't do anything except for prep during the days. Um, even when I get it down to like where I prep a lot. Like I haven't had to prep uh, Witchlight in about a month. Because I just read most of Yawn in advance. Really in depth. Did all my notes uh, right at the start. And then it's been like episodic. So it's been nice. Um, but I would love to run other games on the channel. Um, I I have been... Uh, let me think of how much I can say about this. Uh, like I have been doing writing for some people, uh, that I would love to run some stuff that I've written. Um, and I've been kind of doing that with, uh, Vampire the Requiem, like bringing in stuff that I wrote. By the way, my book's out. Go buy my book. Um, <laughs> where's your link uh, for that? Well, uh, it. I, I think, I think kind of what, what we need, yeah. and, and this is, this is where our audience can support us is if we can get to a point where mm. we are stably making an income that you are surviving and do and thriving then yeah. yeah we can start doing whatever the hell the audience wants right now we're still fishing a lot of trying to get to yeah. that point and those big those big names are what bring people in and if you guys want to start peddling us and like i see i see the comments on tiktok i see people tagging us and saying like yeah these like in you know who what's a good stream i see people tagging us for that and we really appreciate it and so keep that up push us as much as you can even if it's not the patreon just people coming to check us out i think that that is what's going to get us to a point where kelly can run the stuff that he's passionate about yeah and that will be the best games. Um, so um, what I really want to say is if you're on Reddit, if you're a big Redditor, apparently a lot of the traffic for, for YouTube comes from Reddit. Um, I was talking to my buddy, uh, Awkward GM Corbin, and uh, he was saying that like most of his World of Darkness stuff isn't from like anywhere else, like isn't from like Discord or anything. It's from people on Reddit. I don't Reddit. I've never really have. Um, but if Only you're on people Reddit, I knew on Reddit were awful people, and so yeah. I never wanted to get involved. Share mostly, us on Reddit. I mostly just read "Am I the asshole?" on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. So, like, like get us around Reddit. Post us. Uh, share us. Post us. Share us. Like, even if you're if you can't join the Patreon or, or support us financially, just be part of the team. Share us around. Join the Discord too, because we got like 500 good people on there. Let's yeah. have 500 more good people. Um, and. Uh, so, I mean, other parts of that, things that we do. Like, I've got a ton of different things that I want to run. Do you guys want to hear a short list of, of campaign ideas that I have for the future? Yes. 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 Okay, let's do it. Uh, let me pull up my list. So, Dark Tales planning. Uh, I will not spoil anything. So, here we go. Um, okay, cast list. To-do items. Timetable 2021. What do we got? <laughs> Okay, uh, I really want to run Blades in the Dark. I really want to run Band of Blades. I really want to run a modern day Mage the Ascension game. I really want to run a Mage the Ascension game set in the 1990s before cell phones were super oh, prominent back in the grunge, Matrix era. Grunge, grunge, <laughs> With grunge and stuff. Uh, I want to run a game set in Elos that is set in a, uh, a homage, ding, of Horizon Zero Dawn that takes place on an island where technology is fused with organic beings and uh, you are living in a proto-Stone Age society. Um, and having to do, it's like a little short 12-episode game of being a bunch of uh, people in this kind of uh, Neolithic tribe. Neo-Neolithic, I suppose. Uh, that are trying to achieve a goal to save their tribe from destruction. Uh, I have another one that is uh, called Generic Fantasy Setting 2, uh, which is um, uh, a band of adventurers who broke up about 10 or 15 or 20 oh. years before uh, get back together for one final hurrah when a friend or child that they've had in the meanwhile goes missing and have to reclaim their past honor and fame by um, risking their lives in one last adventure. Uh, 
That's a really good one. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Descent into Avernus. Uh, I want I want another crack at Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Uh, I got to yeah. do Werewolf the uh, Forsaken Season 3. I want to do a Demon the mm-hmm. Fallen and a Demon the Descent game. I want to do a Technocracy game. I want to do... Uh, I want to do Curse of Strahd as an e- as an abridged isekai series. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> I want to do Hotel Barovia as an abridged isekai series. Oh, oh my God. God. Yes. God. Uh, I want to do. Uh, hold on, I've got more. I want. Uh, I promised Robin one day I would run a Star Wars game for her. Uh, I want to do. What else we got here? Um, I'm going to look at my shelf. Uh, I want to run a short run alien game. I want to run more powered by the apocalypse. I want to run a longer aberrant or scion game that really dip, dips into the mythology rather than the, the system and crunch and the short story. Um, I want to run, I want to run a couple episodes of Bedlam Hall, which is a game where you're basically like Downton Abbey, but it's also like really gloomy and depressing. Um, I want to run, I want to run the Rick and Morty D and D, but yes. I only want to run it for people who can do the voices. <laughs> yeah. All right, everybody shut the fuck up. We're going to start this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez, Rick. I'd have to work on that. I, you I, know I what? That wasn't terrible. Bay. I wonder, I want you to run Brindlewood Bay. Uh, I have backed so many Kickstarters. Yeah. I want to run that game where you are running a bed and breakfast. I recently backed, um, one of the big things I want to play is I backed the Domestic Adventurer's Guide. I saw it at the end of an old Ginny D video because I was I had, I had was putting her up on YouTube because I had nothing else to watch, right? And it, not, that's not a slam against Ginny D. She's great. It's just that I don't normally watch how-to videos because it's... I, I prefer to. I, I, mo- I mostly watch film theory these days, but um, so I was watching that, and it's a ga- it's a guidebook about how to have domestic partnerships in D anD D, where you have like the oath of companionship and things like that. Uh, and it's just it's all about marriage and love, and I'm like, I fucking love that. Give me my love story D anD D games. Oh um, um, can I just say that one of the the most fun games I've played in that wasn't Mage. Um, because just mage always above um was um uh that werewolf the forsaken game you ran where we basically spent like three games trying to build a house <laughs> so, <laughs> and getting grades from school because we were all teenagers <laughs> yeah my gosh just stupid uh, amounts yeah. of fun in case people didn't see uh, or didn't know isekai is uh anime for like another world so like a mm-hmm. someone from earth is transported to another world uh that's an isekai anime usually um or Outlander, the uh, TV show yeah. for moms. Yeah. Um, also, Paradox Talks. Uh, yes, I believe Dorktail has seen and backed the old gods of Appalachia. Can't I love old gods. Of, okay, I'm from the Midwest, <laughs> my friend. Um, old gods of Appalachia is set... Let me just put it this way. Old gods of Appalachia occurs some about 300 miles away from where I grew up. I listened to Old Gods of Appalachia, and I almost wore my Old Gods of Appalachia t-shirt today. Now, I'm only about eight, ten episodes into that thing there, but I could run it. I could run it into the ground where the <laughs> old this. things go. <laughs> Whew, I got the vapors. Uh, um, I want to run, run that. I want to run... Oh, shit, what else I want to play have? more I- Hunter. I want to, oh God, Hunter Second Edition. I promised I would do that, but I only have so many days a week and and I've got other writing projects I need to get out. Like I'm, I, I kind of promised that when we hit a hundred patrons on Patreon, I would start work on my own D&D book. Mm-hmm. And I've got it right here. I've got Edagon's Tower of Everything on my to-do list, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the ELO setting book, right? Yeah. And these are all things I really want to do. And, and I, I and, love and the- it. The more, the more patrons that you guys as the audience can send our way, the more people you bring into the dork fold means uh, Kelly can hire editors and hire, even if it's just us, it can pay us so that we can oh. work less so that we can edit. And if he gets paid fully from this, he doesn't need to do all of those side work that he, mm-hmm. so he can focus on stuff like this and you're going to get better stuff. It's true. really true. And I'm going to like, and I would love to just be able to give you guys on Patreon all of my stuff. I'd love to give you the vampire books. I, I can't. Um, they're not mine. Yeah. I wrote for them. They are under my, my friend Sam's publishing company. I got, I get paid for them, but I don't own them. Right. 
Um, but yeah, I want to run all that. What the hell else do I, I want to run? I want to run Dungeons and Doggies. I want to run some more episodes where everyone's a dog. Oh, so fun. I want to be my St. Bernard again. Oh um, my God. So cute. I want to run. Hold on. There are a couple more. Oh no. Uh, are there? Oh, I went through most of them actually. Hold on. Let me go through my Kickstarters oh, real no. quick. <laughs> oh jeez. So the, I, I will give you a list of some of the things I backed. Oh, you live in Tennessee. We have a lot of viewers from Tennessee. Like a lot of our more vocal viewers are from Tennessee. Nice. It's almost like you got that old time hospitality. <laughs> got hospitality. And yes, and yes, a, a Snowy, a Codium. Uh, there, there are a bunch of us that have been working our way up to uh, to doing more regular games. The, like a lot of us that used to run, we, we run for Extra Life. Or extra Life like is good prep. <laughs> great yeah, prep great to see prep. if you can do it. The, Absolutely. The, the, uh, now to be transparent about that, the the reason that like I'm the primary runner, aside from just that like that's my skill set, right? Like it's it's something that I'm really min maxed into, is that if people are going to run on the channel, I have to know that they're going to finish, yeah. that they're going to bring that that level, and that they've got a plan, right? Like because if I if I have somebody who runs a game and we you know we pay for all this art and we do all this stuff, um. And then it goes like two episodes and then they're like, I don't really feel like running this anymore. It's like, well, too bad. You agreed to it. Like, signed up for you this. know, you signed up for it. Like yeah. we, so we kind of have to plan for like <laughs> smaller arcs or things like that. Like, I, I don't think I would ever have anybody be like, okay, well, Call of the Netherdeep 2, you know, uh, Ruidus Boogaloo is yeah. <laughs> showing up this week. Uh, it's a 40 episode game. I'm going to run it on Dork Tales. I'm, I don't think you are. Yeah. Um, like, I don't think Especially I trust with that short notice. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I trust many people to run 40 episodes of something like, a, you know, five, 10, something like that. I mean, it depends. Um, and it's, it's one of those things like, I don't want to get let down because hopefully I'd be a player in that game for a yeah. change. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I've seen too many people flake. I really wish I touched yeah. on this during one of the DM panels, but uh, the My Little Pony game was fantastic. Um, Aww. It was. It was so good. So Aww. good. Um, but so many people flake in real life. I don't want to do that to everybody who's watching, too, because you guys get invested. Like, if I stopped running Mage right now because I didn't feel like it, that would you, you'd kill me. You hunt me down. Jen I might kill you. I know where you live. Jen, yeah. Jen might Don't kill you. Don't even joke. Jen, Jen would joke. kill me. She's got the murder in her eyes. Excuse me, uh, I have somewhere to go. Yeah. <laughs> Are you Thank here you to pick up your Jen. technocracy book? <laughs> yeah, a, he was found dead with a technocracy book lodged in his throat. Um, <laughs> impressive, impressive, honestly. Yes, I would like to pick that up. I'll grab it sometime this week. That sounds good. That's, that's good. I'll get you uh, a thing for your camera then, too. Cool. Don't let me forget. Um, but, like, that was one of the things that I would really, I really wanted to say for DMs is that when you're running a game, you are going to hit a wall. Uh, running a game, uh, running a long-form game is running a marathon, okay? And you are going to hit the wall. You are going to hate the game you're running, probably, if it's long enough. If you're anything like me, you're going to hate it. You're going to feel it and you're going to be like, oh God, I wish I could just do anything in the world. I wish I could go to the gym instead of this. I wish I could go to visit family instead of this. I wish I could do something even worse than those options. I wish I could go to the <laughs> dentist instead of doing this no. type of thing. Uh, I just want to stop. And then you ghost your players. I've seen all of this a lot. Like people who ghost players, go, well, I'm not really feeling the game anymore. If you expect your players to show up and it's a social contract that you're going to do your best to give them that type of experience and then you pull out with no notice, you are breaching that social contract yourself. I'm not saying that if you're hating a game, you don't have to run it forever. See if you can ride it out. Wrap See it up. if you can... What's that? I said wrap it up. like Or wrap it up, yeah. yeah. Or sometimes you'll just hit a slump where like there are pl plenty of places in Shards of Nern where I was like, oh god, this, this section... I just need to get through it. I need to get through this section. It's awful. Um, like, it's just not fun. And the players love it. Like, those are the... Strangely enough, those are the things that your players will actually enjoy more. And you'll be upset that they're enjoying it and you're not. <laughs> um, How do you like this? So just push through it. You'll get your second wind. You'll get your second wind and it'll all be fine. Um, or wrap it up. Like, give a satisfactory ending. You can do that usually in a session or two. Or, or um, even, and, like, do a hiatus. Like, say... like. 
that's a great mm-hmm. thing to have we were talking about this in the modules panel you know have candle keep on hand of you know what guys i'm really just stuck in this story and i'm really not loving it right now are you cool that if the next few sessions we just run some fun adventures with some random rolled up characters are you guys okay with that I mean, they're probably gonna say yes or maybe they want to run it maybe it's like oh does anybody want to run some candle keep mm-hmm. cool so yeah like that's absolutely um th- another thing that you can do though is also use the seasonal format mm-hmm. end it on a season which is um y- you can end a campaign or a chronicle at a point where you're like this is where a season would end it can even be on a big cliffhanger you can never come back to that and it's more satisfying than if you don't let it trickle don't let it fade don't let it ghost okay um but like just remember that as a dungeon master or game master or storyteller or whatever um everyone at the table is spending the same amount of time that you are at the table um but also if you're not enjoying a game you are spending twice that amount of time or three times that amount of time with that game in your head um and for those of you with with dungeon master those of you who are players be kind to your runner tell them thank you when game was fun let them know do you know what is the best thing even okay this is the sequence of events that happens in my games uh and this is i'm not actually going to call somebody out here uh i'm not going to call anybody on stream out i'm going to say cat so so our good friend cat from rhyme of the frost maiden and a bunch of other games is really good about this because she will text me within 24 hours of a game usually uh, and I'm not saying that anybody here doesn't. Uh, Robin, you're very good at this as well and always have been. Uh, but Kat will say, game was really fun last night. Or, oh, I can't believe that happened. Will send me just a simple message, usually a sentence. And that makes it worth it. Even if I didn't have a good time, even if I had a rough time and I felt like, oh, I couldn't do anything and all my monsters got trampled. And this, like, I couldn't, I rolled for shit because I always roll for shit, apparently. Unless I'm, unless I'm rolling nuclear, I'm rolling crap. <laughs> um, and it's hard. Like, you feel like, oh God, I really didn't enjoy this. And then the players will send a message and it'll make the difference. And it doesn't have to be, you know, that was the best game ever. You're the most wonderful person. But that was a lot of fun. Thanks. Be kind. It's pretty easy. (laughs) Unless you're a jerk. Then it's really hard. So don't be a jerk. (laughs) Um, And feedback is important. Like, if you are... uh, Days Day Forgot, you're absolutely correct there. If if someone asks you for feedback, um, give them feedback. Um, Roses and thorns, stars and wishes is something that I've heard Krista and Robin both talk about. I think that like we should start doing that more often, to mm-hmm. be honest, after arcs. Um, I think that oh. as a, uh, you know, I was saying don't necessarily have to do a like uh, a check in at the end of every game, but like having a like, so what did everybody like? What did you not like? Even that, because that can just be like, oh, you know, like I, I really don't like puzzles because I'm not good at them. And so we did this big giant puzzle and it was the whole game, not here, it was a home game with, with uh, friends. And they, mm. they said, it was just like all puzzles and I was useless. And I was like, well, this is not even remotely fun because I just feel stupid now. Uh, and I said that at the end of the game, they were like, okay, going forward, I'll be a little more cognizant of that. I'll throw in puzzles, but there'll be other stuff to go with it. That's all you guys say. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I, well, I like for example, like during okay. Rhyme in the Ooh. city, I had a really difficult time with it, and Kelly kind of noticed and picked up, and eventually I said, "Yeah, I'm not having fun." And he's like, "Cool, I'm gonna make you something so you have fun." And it she was cried. The best it was great. I, I made did. her a magic item, and she cried. I was so sweet. I, mean, I it was new first time playing D and D, and I've never had someone do that, and it was just like, "Oh my god, you care so much that I'm enjoying this." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're you're at the table four hours every week. Of course I care, dummy. <laughs> right? Jen, talk. Um, yeah, I was just going to say that for some people, m- me in particular, um, I do need time to like process those things to figure out, you know, what I liked and didn't like. So don't be demanding immediately. Like, give me feedback right now. It's like, give me 24 to 48 hours and you'll have feedback. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can you can do it anonymously. You can do it through Google Forms. Uh, that's a great way to do it. You can set it up as quizzes yeah. um, and you can make it anonymous. You could, um, a, 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 don't be a jerk when you're giving your feedback, okay? 
Um, don't give feedback when you're angry. And the greatest trick is the shit sandwich, everybody. Yeah. Uh, shit sandwich uh, <laughs> is something I learned in grad school uh, when I was teaching other people to be teachers and things like that. Uh, a shit sandwich is uh, bread, shit, bread. And the way that works is, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Who should I get on to? Uh, bring up something bad. Bring up something bad that happened. Someone, someone tell me something naughty that you did in a game that I didn't like. Um, I know I've done many. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, you know what? I'll, 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 I'll pick on, I'll pick on Caitlin for something. Oh, you know, I'll pick on Traz for something that I can't prove oh. he's ever done. How's that? <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. Traz. Traz, I wanted to thank you for playing last night, man. You like brought some great energy there. And I really thought like the thing you did with like, um, with that porta potty was hilarious. Like that was <laughs> genuinely ingenious. Um, also, while we're chatting real quick, um, I need you to stay off your phone uh, at the table. Uh, it's really distracting to me and people can see you doing it on camera. And it's it, it, it makes me feel like you're not really committed. Um, like if you're going to do it, I need it to be less and and not obvious. I know you got some stuff going on right now. So just try to tone it down. OK, but also. I also wanted to say before we're done, that scene that you had with Jen and Robin, where you convinced them to assassinate the mayor with a chicken, was brilliant. <laughs> the fact that he looked like Henry Cavill as a chicken is even better. So that is the way, that is the best way to give feedback is to give positive comment, negative comment, positive comment, because you're bolstering them. You're giving the feedback and then you're giving an honest thing to pull them out of it. Okay. Okay. Don't do the opposite. Don't make an open face shit sandwich. Don't make a shit oh bread God. shit sandwich. Yes. Okay. Don't do and do not make a shit mac. Oh God. Or a okay. A big shit. Yeah. A big shit oh mac. No. Oh no. All right. So we only got like five ish minutes where we have to go. We're, um. But um. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's that for this, guys. Is there anything else that that we have? Any final questions? Um done working on some music family fantasy rpg that's great sorry for the use of the word uh so much there because i know it's i'm trying to keep this family friendly um uh someone asked us uh yeah. the different uh handling heavy rp versus tactical players i'm lucky that most of my players are heavy rp um uh if you, if you have enough players to separate them into two different games that's always great um are you a tactical DM? Um, because, oh, hey, Raid, how's it going? Robbie Landis, nice. Um, I don't know, are you a tactical DM is a big question about that. Because, like, if someone is there to have fun in, like, a tactical, like, like super tactical, grid-based, rules-based um, setting, and you're not a DM who, or a GM or a storyteller who really gives a crap about rules and strategy... That's like, maybe you're not right for each other and you should swipe the other direction on game tender for each other or whatnot, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, some, oh, some God, games- Don't are mention just... game tender. They're going to ask you to make it. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. <laughs> yeah. It already exists, doesn't it? That probably, probably does. Hey, you know where people can swipe? Right down into the tip jar. Because a quick reminder, the Dork Tales Expo is a fundraiser for the channel to get us better art, better equipment, better lives, and better stuff. Also, uh, as Krista was saying, and Robin was saying, and everyone was saying, uh, the like, join the Patreon. Because the more patrons we have, the closer we, we are to... have 70 now. I just Ooh. refreshed. Was we it Day's Day of Might have been. Day Daisy, Daisy, I know it's not your name. Like, <laughs> I really want to call you Daisy from now on. That's your new nickname. It's part Daisy. of the family. Unless you my package like has been delivered. Ooh, nice. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just checked my email. M Already meet... spending that money from the chip chat. Exactly. <laughs> meet someone. Someone named Junk Email signed up. Hmm. What? I love. I love that name. <laughs> I and their email is a junk email email. That's hilarious. But it's a real email. That's a junk. Wait, is I it? I think that's. I think that's days. I think because they're, they're going. Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. That that's is the amazing. best. I'm not going to read your email address out loud, but that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> thank you for becoming a very important patron, which means that you get advanced access to videos that nobody else is going to. <laughs> uh, starting with the Alien role playing game on. Uh, well, it won't be the 18th because I'm recording on the 18th. It'll probably be like the 19th or 20th that it'll be on Patreon. Um, but uh, I am dedicating one night 
a uh, one night a month to specifically because that was one of the things is you're supposed to get advanced content you'll be getting that with the podcast but i was i was meaning to record an episode but it's been so busy with games running five nights a week that i have i haven't had any nights off to do other stuff yeah and it's getting to the point where i can't get casts for it because it's like um i shouldn't say that because then people in the discord are gonna be like cast me and i'm like i don't know you yeah, <laughs> yeah. i don't know you um anyway uh, so you'll be getting a bunch of cool stuff. The alien game is going to be great. Um, so yeah, go and join the Patreon folks, uh, because then you can help our, our nerdy dream happen and, uh, get a bunch of cool content, additional stuff and stay on there. Uh, it's, you can join for a buck a month. You can join for five bucks a month. You can join for 150 bucks a month, which means that we're like Facebook friends. I think, uh, it's don't don't do that one i'm gonna delete that tier eventually <laughs> i think that's the world builder there's like a 250 fifty dollar a month one i had a 300 or i had a three thousand three hundred and thirty three dollar a month one for a while that was the or no it was a three thousand dollar a month one that was an i love you three thousand words you can do whatever you want i don't care you can come to my house and hang out with me for three thousand a month i don't care <laughs> I've since i will deleted. be your best friend for this amount of money for three thousand dollars <laughs> yeah. a month i will be a very close friend uh, yeah. <laughs> but no seriously like um please support the channel if you if you can um if i really think that everyone who watches this channel religiously and like i see a lot of the same names and faces if you got a couple bucks like seriously if you're using us more than netflix consider throwing a, a portion of that netflix money our way yeah um because you're getting they're, you're giving them 20 bucks a month and if you're watching us more than them we need it more exactly well that's not true we haven't lost two hundred thousand subscribers <laughs> uh, and i you know what i don't know if we're watched in russia i don't care <laughs> yes yeah, zach go with the tier where Kelly will oh back. that's right i did make a tier where you can put wizard on your resume and i will i also yeah. said that i would vouch for awesome. you being a wizard and i would not elaborate on job interviews <laughs> that you could use me as a reference and i would say yeah. yes he's a wizard can you elaborate no i can't magical claws yeah <laughs> i signed a i signed a pact but i i said you probably won't get there right there is a a non-demonic agreement there is a um oh uh there's an asterisk on that one that says i do not guarantee that you will get this job you will probably not get the job you will probably not get this job <laughs> all right mm -hmm. so uh folks we're gonna be back in a couple minutes with a bunch of us for um the the finale wrap up um Krista, you're in that. Caitlin, do you want to be in that one as well? I think I, I don't think I'll make it. You don't think you'll make it? Okay. Yeah, all right, then I'll need to find... Is someone checking the chat? I need to find one more person. Millie can't make it. But, uh, so folks, thank you so much. You're all amazing. Um, thank you for being here through this. I, I hope that you enjoyed Dork Tales Expo. We're, we're going to do an outro in a bit. Uh, but in the meanwhile, uh, if you want to win at D&D, final words, uh, be kind, rewind, and bring some snacks. And try to bring some healthy snacks. It sounds like a like a dumb adult thing to say, but <laughs> your blood sugar will crash and you'll get cranky and then you'll punch your dungeon master. Uh-huh. Don't do that. Don't you know, do that. We have experience? 71 patrons now. <laughs> oh. 71? Oh. Mm -hmm. So much closer. Four more. What? It's a secret project. I don't want to read anybody's name out, but but uh BW, thank you very much. Yeah. Um so you're amazing. Um <laughs> yeah, but seriously, like it's like healthy snacks um be surprisingly useful for you um because blood sugar levels are rough they can be they can really like don't just eat doritos at the table and drink mountain dew like try to especially okay if you're once uh, in a while yeah like have them at the table but like get like some like celery and like roma tomato or like mini tomatoes and stuff vegetable and... platter those are my favorite yeah. things to bring like anywhere. you can still dip it in like yeah. a metric on a ranch right like mm -hmm. but get your nutrients right? guys come on like you can be a healthy nerd and do push-ups if you can like like seriously oh, exercise oh, i'm so excited because there's a ranch dressing that i can have oh, they made oh, an egg great. free version also I'm, a, I'm gonna call you out here jen jen yep. what's your deadlift at now yeah <laughs> do it uh, 205 pounds for three to five reps five sets of three to five reps Hell okay, yeah. so that means that yeah. that if you weigh two hundred pounds, Jen can lift and throw your ass fifteen times. So don't mess with us. <laughs> oh wow, she can my, throw me. My max for doing it once and therefore being able to tip someone over the side of a boat uh, <laughs> into the water is two hundred. So to dispose of the body, yeah, nice. is how much? Two hundred forty-five. 
Two forty. Jeez. So like you deadlift like like Jen is Jen is tough. Jen's tough. She. It's why I'm yeah. wiped today because deadlifts were today. <laughs> yeah, Jen is a tank. So Jen Jen is definitely the fighter, or the barbarian of the group. I don't know. You got hit points. Yeah. Um, I do rage gonna... pretty well. It's true. <laughs> if I go off my ADHD meds, I rage real well. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, so folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes with the final panel. And uh, it's the final panel. <laughs> All Don't right. get copyright. <laughs> oh, yeah, no kidding. All right, bye, everybody. We'll see you in a minute. Don't bye. go anywhere.